So the guys in the hole get a throw mic, and that way even the rescuers, whoever's going to be the rescuers this time, it works with an SCDA. And these are rigged up to go underneath your helmet. So this is your happy little, I call it the uh, Olympic swim cap. It goes <laughs> on the peak of your head, that's over your ear, and that does up under your chin. Which you that's on the chin here. <laughs> and then for the throw bike, in my experience, the positioning of the throw bike is kind of crucial in terms of the volume you get. So what I always do is I'll just talk and I'll use my fingers to find out where the most vibration is. So for me, it's about here. In my experience, a lot of guys put it too high and you can't really hear what's going on. So find out where it's vibrating the most and then the throw bike goes right up against the vibrating bit. And if you go off to the side a little bit, it's a little more comfortable. Does it? Am I up to the side? Yeah, you want that right up against your skin, the uh, plastic bit. And also, in my experience, the tighter, the tighter you can make it from still standing, the better it seems to be able to talk. So it works pretty good. When it gets too loose, it comes away from your neck. And then we have the boxes. There's two two kinds, one with power, one without power. I like to keep one with power outside the hole and one without power inside the hole. Although you could mix and match them any way you want. And these line up, tongue and groove. And then twist till it clicks. Grab another one. And it's got a belt loop, but if you put it down here, in my experience, the first time you go around the corner and do this, you tend to bend and make things nasty. So I like to have it up high, and what all you should do is grab a carabiner. You don't have any. Go through the loop. Tip it up high so that it'll run freely. But you have less chance of squishing it. The bigger you are, the more chance you have of squishing it. And then you have to hold this one too. So everybody has to have a box. And then we hook the boxes up. And you can hook them up in a whole bunch of different ways. You can either just go one end of the rope, another end of the rope, but that kind of limits you. Or we can use the splitter box, which is what we like to do, because then we can get multiple people working on the same system. So the rope will go in the hole with you. Same kind of thing, tongue and groove, line it up with little orange dots. Twist to the clips. If you have to force it, you're not doing it right. You can use a rope here as well. We just use the cables to conserve our ropes. And then I can put a third off of this one, maybe hook up another splitter box, put three more off of that one, mix and match however you need to match, mix and match. And when you turn it on, you should be able to hear it, sir. If you talk. Say it. A little loud. Just a little. That's pretty neat. So the really good thing about it is it's always on, so that you don't have to be fumbling for a radio, you can be doing your work, doing your rescue, doing whatever, and uh, everything you say will be heard though, so keep that in mind. you're still breathing. So that's it in a nutshell.